Is that uh, visible? We can see your Pig Latin Challenge screen. Okay. So, uh, Pig Latin, uh, it's a it's an argo or a jargon. Uh, a, apparently, there were precursors going back uh, well well into the the sixteen hundreds. Uh, some lines in Shakespeare that referenced do, so called dog Latin. Uh, it, I think back in an era when more folks knew actual Latin, there were uh, there was a, a certain interesting wordplay. Uh, that would happen in terms of sort of false Latins and, and various tweaks. But the modern version apparently appeared in around 1919 um, and uh, has been uh, codified to some extent for all time in uh, BSD games. Uh, there's a there's a uh, pig Latin converter that's included in one of the standard uh, uh, BSD Unix packages. Um, it's a, uh, a sort of a simple translate translation that uh, kids often learn as you know at an early age. I, I remember encountering this as a young child. You know, pig becomes ig pay and Latin becomes at and lay and so forth. Um, and uh, sort of it, it's obvious when it's a single leading character that you um, take this uh, and move it to the back. But pig Latin is actually uh, and, and yeah, sorry. Here's the decomposition. So you're stripping off that first. Uh, letter or actually the first sound and uh, moving it to the to the back and adding an ay. So the forward translation uh, to Pig Latin is is very straightforward. Um, the same thing applies uh, when there are multiple consonants. And so uh, when you have uh, a word like friends, it's rens fray and mile smay and so on. Um, and so you want to take all the consonants up into the uh, to the first vowel and uh, and bring it around to the back. So um, there's a special rule when it comes to leading vowels, and there's a little bit of variability if you go look at the Wikipedia article as to how this is done. Um, what I learned as a child was just doing uh, you just slap way on the end, but uh, and, and that seems to be a common one where you just uh, take the take the word and slap way. Um, the uh, the uh, Unix utility. Um, has a, a few interesting uh, things that it, or sorry, the Wikipedia article implies that the uh, this is also meant to be done phonetically. So if one was being sort of true to to at least uh, one of one of the, the variants that was suggested there, a word like honest might be something where it would be become honest hey instead of uh, instead of what you might expect. Um, the um, uh, the other thing the Unix utility does that's interesting is that it preserves case. Um, the uh, uh, QU is a, another fun special case where uh, the, the, the U, although his vowel is treated uh, sort of weirdly by, uh, by the Unix utility uh, and is, uh, is also uh, uh, something that, that folks will uh, will do in sort of informal use of it. They'll implicitly assume, of course, the U doesn't come along for that particular ride um, in this sort of a way. So quest becomes est qua and, and so on. Um, the uh, Unix utility, I, I noticed, uh, does a weird thing. It, it actually treats the letter Y uh, as a leading uh, consonant in a in a peculiar fashion. It treats it as a vowel for the purposes of, uh, uh, of manipulation, but it uh, rather than slapping way on the end, it slaps A on the end. And uh, this is just weird. I've never seen this before. Um, this was not, not what I encountered as a child, so I left this one alone. So I, I'm uh, in, interesting to examine someone else's implementation. Uh, and if you haven't ever typed the word pig on a, on a, on a Unix system that has BSD games installed, uh, I encourage that for fun. So, but I wanted to do this in fourth, and the approach that I took was to keep a buffer for the first uh, consonant cluster, and then fill it in character by character. And then once I come across a non-consonant, I consider that sort of the stem, and then I print the first vowel, and I wanted to preserve case, so I, I print that vowel in the case of the stem. So if I had a capitalized word in the stem, that when I get to that first vowel, I will capitalize it. And then once I get to the very end of that word, then I emit whatever is sitting in the stem buffer and then add on a final uh, way or final uh, a, a, depending on the, the, the contents of that stem. 
And so the way this plays out, it, imagine I've got this, this buffer I've been describing, and I say I've got the word scram. As I scan through this letter by a letter, I've got you know S, C, and these are filling in that, that buffer, R. And then when I get to this A, I realize, okay, now I need to start emitting characters, and I emit them until I get to the space, at which point I know that it's time to uh, uh, oops, uh, get to the space, at which point I emit the contents of that buffer, uh, the SCR, adjusting the case of it uh, to lowercase because I know that I'm not at the front of the word, um, and then slapping an, an AY on the end. Um, and so uh, this took a lot more boilerplate, uh, well, not boilerplate, sorry, this took a lot more complexity than I was expecting, and I, I didn't anticipate it would be as challenging uh, as it proved to be. Um, I used a bunch of helping words uh, between to figure out if you're in a certain range by which, based on which I defined uh, an upper and a lower, uh, a check for something being a letter, uh, C upper to, to convert a character to upper, and C lower to convert it to lowercase. Um, and then I, uh, I ended up um, uh, even needing to have a, a word to to, uh, to scan a, a string to see if it contains something because that let me uh, easily define a uh, if something was a vowel or I called it vowel -y because I wanted to include y and y is ambiguous and then consonant is um, uh, checks the consonant so that that's my my way of checking for a vowel or a consonant um, and then this buffer that I mentioned earlier I, I need to keep a buffer for the stem um, and and as as we'll see later, uh, it it ends up being useful to have an alternate buffer, which we'll talk about in a second. But um, so the buffer, I, I gave myself a big capacity, although in practice, I think the size of the stem you can get is pretty small. Um, I have some operations in the buffer. You can clear the buffer. You can add a character to the buffer. You can check if uh, uh, if the buffer ha has anything in it. Uh, Really, that should be not empty or something. Um, and then I, I have a word to extract the, the contents of the buffer as a string. Um, and then I have a word called L-type that can print something in lowercase. Um, and I have a word to print the buffer in lowercase. And using that, I, uh, I have a, a word to check if the buffer is, uh, is capital. And uh, if and then a word that will capitalize letters uh, only if the first word in the in the uh, stem buffer is capitalized, um, and then I uh, have another word that will uh, add a uh, add a consonant to the buffer, and it will decide uh, based on whether uh, the stem is already done whether to add that word uh, to the buffer or to just go ahead and print it. Um, and uh, then all of this is glued together by this word finish, which, uh, or sorry, at the, at the finish of the word, when you've gotten to the end, you need to omit the, um, the, the stem. So if, if the buffer has anything in it, uh, then I go ahead and emit the, the stem buffer and emit a Y. Otherwise, I, uh, I check to see if, it, if uh, there's any kind of a stem, uh, and if so, I emit uh, way, so that's the vowel case, and then I reset the stemmed flag and can go on to the next word. And so the, the whole thing, to process one word, I, I check to see uh, if it's, uh, or sorry, one character of a word, I check to see if it's a vowel-like letter. Uh, if it is, I, uh, I emit it, uh, or sorry, I convert it uh, to, uh, to capital if needed, oops, and then uh, Note that, that I have finished the stem at the beginning of the word. Otherwise, I go uh, filling in the consonant buffer, and uh, and and uh, and then at the end I finish and, and emit uh, that last character. Uh, and so for a whole word, I, I wrapped it up in pig, uh, and so pig processes uh, uh, characters until uh, until the end of uh, the input stream. So I'm able to read a series of letters one by one and and stream them through. So that was pretty hard, actually, and I, I look forward to seeing uh, how others have tackled this problem. Maybe I, I, I went about it with, with too much complexity, but I then compounded my woes by trying to do the reverse um, 
and uh, uh, tried to do my, my own sort of bonus challenge of, of, of re reversing the thing. This was even harder. So, um, you know, to go from pork, you go from pork back to orc pay, but this is to go back from orc pay to pork, right? No problem. Um, and work can go to, uh, uh, to orc way, but, uh, but wait, uh, you know, and R, and R goes to our way, but does Orkway go uh, go to uh, go to uh, go to Ork or to or to Pork, right? And, and or to Work? And so you see, there's some contradictions. Not every uh, not every combination uh, has an unambiguous conversion back, right? So our way could be either where or uh, or are. And uh, multiple consonants make this even harder. If you've got, uh, you know, a a play, uh, is it lape or play? Um, well, this one is at least something you can resolve uh, a couple different ways. One thing I tried at first is, well, you know, only some stems are valid in English. So what if I look for the 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 sort of valid uh, stems, which are just single letters, and then these these uh, particular combinations. Um, and so I came up with this clusters word and, and a way to go scan to see if something is in a cluster and, and check to see uh, if uh, if something has that particular stem. Um, but there are, uh, and that helps disambiguate, you know, but then you get into uh, words like uh, chops where uh, a bunch of, there are multiple different stems that are valid here. H is a valid stem, CH is a valid stem, SCH is a valid stem. And so um, just looking at the stems is insufficient to disambiguate uh, which of these is the right translation. Um, however, only one of these three is actually in the dictionary. So ultimately, that's what I caved to and said, well, okay, let me also check the dictionary. So I go ahead and load in the system dictionary loaded into a gigantic buffer. Um, and, uh, and then I have uh, some words that I borrowed from, uh, from the Wordle challenge that let me iterate through, um, iterate through a, uh, each of the words in the dictionary. Uh, and I have this each word that loops through each word in the dictionary. And then, um, but of course, one other problem is that in this situation, I want to compare words based on case. Um, but as you'll see later, it turns out that proper nouns are a bit of a wrinkle. And so I add a, a word to compare words regardless of case. Um, and I have a word to check to see if something is in the dictionary. Um, however, I also have a word to check to see if it's in the dictionary uh, if I interpret it as uh, starting with a vowel. And so I, this ended up being complicated. So you have heat, which you go to eat hay, or you can go to Thea. And there are words in the dictionary, Thea is in the Unix dictionary, in lowercase no less, which is confusing. So um, I go ahead and I check for um, proper nouns, and I have an iterator to, to loop through and look at proper nouns, and, uh, and also to check for the cases uh, where it's uh, treated as a vowel or not. Um, and I have a bunch of operations to manipulate my buffer even further to get there, uh, and some more utilities to, to print it, to check to see if, uh, if it makes sense as a, as a word that can be uh, decoded using, uh, using the, the, the way rule. Um, and then I also resort to uh, trying a bunch of different rotations. And this ended up being extremely complicated. Uh, I try several different rotations and see if any of them work. Uh, I check to see if uh, any of these are first work as a preferring non-proper nouns, then any word in the dictionary, and then finally uh, any of the stem rotations in that, in that order of preference uh, is what this does. Um, and then I go through and process each of the words in, in my input and output. Uh, and I roll both into a single program. And uh, it's, it's surprisingly small, but it, as you saw just now, a lot of complexity. And I'm not sure I'm, I'm thrilled with it. 
Um, but it is able to do the stated goal. It can take a, 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 a stream of uh, input, uh, convert it to pig, proper pig Latin, and uh, uh, convert it back uh, successfully. Um, you'll notice that the uh, capital uh, IV, I don't preserve the case there. Um, this uh, Mark Twain quote is able to, to go uh, uh, successfully both ways. I don't, I don't bother showing it going back because there's, there's no difference between the input and the output. So that one it did perfectly. So then I thought, well, you know, I'll try some larger things. I took this, this uh, Odysseyche and um, it gets uh, about 21 lines are, are wrong. And uh, it's interesting choices like, uh, well, here's the diff actually. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, notice the word Rhea and here is screwed up, or the dictionary didn't contain the word dreamed, uh, or uh, the word wisp uh, was not in the dictionary, or the word brooklet uh, was not in the Unix dictionary. Um, another fun one is the, is the word wast, right? Because wast is ambiguous, is it, is it, is it, is it, uh, is it uh, is asked way uh, lost or is asked way um, is asked way asked, and so it messes that one up. So a, a surprising number of errors, um, and uh, and so forth. Uh, warm and arm is another one. Arm way, um, and so the, the W proves particularly tricky. Um, so I thought, well, let me run it on the complete works of Shakespeare uh, to see how how I'm doing overall. And eh, so I do a round trip through. It's it's uh, uh, 124,000 something lines. Um, a lot of them are exact matches. 58% at the end after a little bit of tweaking. Um, and if I ignore case, then 77% are. But this whole process is slow um, because I'm trying all these rotations, and my my technique for uh, scanning through the dictionary is is inefficient. I, I didn't use a hash table, uh, so it took four hours to run. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, I, I, I'm excited to see what others have, have tried here. This this one proved challenging even to me. So, all right, I'd like to encourage brevity in, in the uh, other uh, implementations. I'm pleased to see them. Uh, we have less than an hour now for Bill Ragsdale and John Harbold. Uh, I'm averse to running over, but I'm uh, also conscious that we have an obligation to the other speakers. So uh, I'm grateful for uh, a complete but uh, focused presentation uh, from uh, colleagues with regard to Pig Latin. Uh, but thank you, Brad. That, that was great. I wonder if somebody could ask Chat GPT while we're waiting uh, to. Uh, write in forth a uh, pig Latin converter and see what the response is. I don't know if maybe it doesn't work that way. Maybe my understanding is flawed. Uh, so on with the show, Bill, I, I believe uh, Brad will uh, call you as the next presentation for pig Latin in forth. Take it away, Bill. Not us. Hold on, I am. Okay, we got it. Um, I will put in a couple short comments uh, from on Brad. Uh, the first is that my solution here is about half of what Brad did on his first pass, and is about 10% of what he did on his second pass. So I just wanted to get done. I, this was like writing a 400 word essay for your English class. I just wanted to get it over. <laughs> second point was, uh, since there is information lost in the transfer from English to Pig Latin, we might consider this as a hashing uh, uh, algorithm for storing passwords. You can store passwords in Pig Latin 
because the process is not reliably reversible. And the third comment is that I remember hearing pig Latin in movies. Uh, if you looked at old movies from the 30s and 40s in detective movies, the cop would get somebody on the street, some felon, and the cop would say, Amscray Mac. And I remember that clearly. For Scram Mac, they'd say, Amscray Mac. <laughs> and so we, we lived with, with uh, pig Latin. Okay, let's see. I'm try to hide the floating panel. Hide the floating panel. There we go. All right, on to my presentation. So we know the basis of it. Um, uh, consonants have a uh, constant ay at the end, and vowels beginning with a vowel have a, a way appended at the end. We'll do this top down. So first, I created an input text uh, buffer of 500 words. And then I put into it the first words of the Declaration of Independence, which I am particularly fond of. Four score and seven years ago, our founders brought forth on this continent a new nation. So I love that phrase. An output buffer, similarly initialized. And this is our top level run. Run uh, takes that input phrase and translates it. The display word at the bottom takes the output text. It's a counted string, so it does a count type and outputs. So that's top level. Next level down is that upon examining the first letter, the UPC makes it to uppercase. And then we do a case statement, which picks out the six valve alternative, six vowel alternative, A, E, I, O, U, and Y. And the default is if there is no vowel, then we take consonant action. The vowel action is pretty straightforward. Uh, in this case, the uh, the two a word just appends the entire word. If uh, we have a word like all, uh, a l l is appended to the output, and then ASCII w append appends w, then a y out of blank. So we just take the word, pass it into the buffer, add w a y at the end. Constant action. Uh, slightly more involved, we extract that first character and store it for a moment. We step over that uh, letter. Then we append the next text until a blank. Then we append the letter that we saved. So the at character is then uh, added at the end with a append letter. And then we append an A, Y, and a blank at the end. Very straightforward. Very logical, very straightforward. Uh, some of the little glue words out the bottom, there are about six of them. Uh, in out just moves a letter from the uh, input buffer to the output buffer, and a word moves a full word from the input buffer to the out. So here's our results. Uh, four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth of this continent of the nation. Our fact, orcs say, and way, even say, years away ago. Uh, go away, our way, others fay, rot fay, orth fay, on way, if stay, continent k, a way, n way, asian nay. The uh, mechanisms I used was that the in stream, input stream was null delimited. Uh, it's easier to parse letter by letter with the uh, null at the end of the terminator. The input st output string was a counted stream because it's easier to append letters. And uh, upper and lowercase letters are a bother. Uh, Brad uh, introduced that as, uh, as, as he should, because I would do translations and I found letters, capital letters popping up in the wrong places. But uh, to, do, to solve that, I just set the entire output to lowercase. Let's see, I thought I had another discovery. Oh, diphthongs. I guess some I was supposed to have a little thing about diphthongs. Uh, no, okay. So on diphthongs, which is uh, leading multiple leading consonants, uh, at the very end of my work, I realized that I was not properly handling those. But since I was out of budget and time, uh, I just charged ahead. And in conclusion, I will point out one thing. Last month, I discussed the book that I have in preparation on Win 32 Fourth. I now have a revised working title, which is Win 32 Fourth Cosmology. Cosmology is a study of the universe. 
And so forest plan, uh, wind forest, 32 forest, the study of wind to forest and its environment. And the subtitle is the complete forest textbook. The point on this is that um, stable diffusion is, is the equivalent of chat, uh, chatbot GPT for graphics. There are about four of them, but stable diffusion, you give it a phrase, they will generate artwork. So as for the cover of my book, I put in a galaxy on a field of stars for a book cover. And this is what it came up with, a, a galaxy on a field of stars for a book cover. I was more than shocked and impressed. If in the Upwork uh, utility uh, or program on uh, internet, you can hire contract programmers or artists in this case, and I would budget for a project like this between $100 and $500. And so Chatbot either got me a finished cover or close to a finished cover for zero. And this puts at risk a lot of the creative work of artists. So uh, with that, I will abandon everything for questions. And do I have any book questions cover. or comments? Uh, who, owns, who owns the artwork for the book cover? I do. Uh, they, I do. It's uh, work for hire. I hired uh, Chatbot. I uh, hired uh, Stable DPT to do it. I'm a registered user, and you pay a fee beyond a certain number of a uh, free cover, a uh, free uh, arts. You pay a fee. I believe the fee is two dollars an image after a minimum. That sounds plausible. Let's go with it. Thank you. I made it up and I'm sticking with it. Back to net control. That that was great, Bill. And, and you you were wise to to simplify the 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 the, uh, the, the upper and lower case was just a just a beast. I, <laughs> I I discovered uh, on uh, when they're due for the uh, they have a, a a command upper and a command lower. You give it a string and it'll it'll force the case. And that was my lifesaver at the end. <laughs> that, that discovery took one minute to discover and saved me probably half an hour. <laughs> All done. Brad's muted. Who's done? going to be the next speaker? Should I go? Looks like I got I Chris and uh, Bob to go next. Who's going next? I think Hello? I think Brad lost his um, audio. He's uh, back. Okay. Bob, are you you gonna go next? Oh yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. Should I go? Yeah. Let me. Uh, let me uh, what? Yeah. Go go for it. Are you hearing? Yeah. Um. Okay. Let me. Uh, Share my uh, screen then. Um, one thing I, I notice is I seem to be the only person who's paid attention to the mask required. And uh, yeah, none of you are wearing your masks. Um, anyway, can you see and hear me okay? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, one thing, I just took a uh, very simple, basic um, thing. Um, I think that, you know, the, the most fundamental thing that's on the, on the wiki uh, page uh, here, whenever you see anything done, you know, happen when I hit a line, it's because I'm hitting F6 instead of enter. Um, but I just took the table from here. Uh, and grabbed it, control C, 
Um, let me make a, one comment, by the way, in terms of, of, of the, the uh, error catching, um, boy, I, I spent a bunch of time, I mean, the Riva Fourth, which uh, I consider just the, the, the uh, uh, fourth in which Cozy was, you know, the, the, the development environment and all of this in any case i i gave up on on trying to do all the sorting out and this um apollo 11 uh principle design principle restart on failure i just go and, and every time that i f6 something it actually saves my entire environment before it executes the line and if something bombs then it just goes you know back out to the dos uh loop and restarts the whole thing and uh, even the uh, compiling of the fourth is fast enough so that it's it's hardly consequential and obviously the saving of of all of this text and all of that is so is is also inconsequential um i started off actually by i i've got i keep around in an ascii browser and i i i actually thought that it was going to be useful to to grab all the vowels out of it and um i won't go through oh i definitely won't oh because i didn't execute this i think oh right anyway skip that because I, I removed all the vowels got a separate vowels and consonants and decided that isn't even worth anything um but let me go and I copied that. Um, here are all the uh, the 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 table of con of, of pig Latin things, and let me. These lines are irrelevant. I just want to go and grab. Okay, now I have the the whole table of that, and. Uh, our get goes and okay now I've got it saved as, as a variable um and in solving and figuring out well first of all I wanted to make a sort of a a, a a data thing out of this um so I removed all the removed all the blanks and and all the quotes and then let me take out the comment symbol there. Uh, turn it into a, a turn the line feeds into split it on line feeds, and then split it all of that on um, equal signs. And so there now I have a list that's got all those pairs as equal signs, and to really turn it into a columnar uh, database and save it. Now I have um, a list of two lists of, and um, just finally to go and show it a little better. I now have the, 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 the whole uh, pair of uh, lists there. Um, and actually, while you were talking to handle uppercase, I had added the uppercase Although I didn't bother because that list is not an uppercase. I didn't even think about doing that. But uh, for instance, um, yeah, I just look at look at where where all the the vowels are in um, the um, the word that's going. Oh, and then um, one of the things is I had. In, in actually extending um, uh, addressing um, structures um, follow with dealing with some of these star things uh, uh, I, I actually blew up cozy current cozy so I'm having to revert back to this is the distribution copy of cozy uh, as of May last year, but in any case, oh, okay. There was an example of of blowing everything away and having to restart. Let me see that I'm okay. Um, 
why did I do that? Any, well, I'm going to skip down. Um, no, no, I should go through this. I, I've got this, I've got T zeros is now. Okay, there, well, pig. Why is that not executing? This is one of the things is I'm the, only person who's running in a live fourth. Um, so why is, um, yeah, so why did this should go in for each of those there? I don't know why it was not, it was not responding. Um, so there, there for each each one of the vowels, it's got uh, where they occur in the word equals it, and um, for each right, and then um, oaring across them. Oh, I know why this screwed up. <laughs> I had the setup so I could reconstruction reconstruct the line. Okay, that that essentially oared across them, and. Um, then that actually you can see is is a is um, uh, a uh, um, nested, so that went and essentially disclosed it, and um, restructured this. So actually, the index of the of the first um, uh, vowel in there is is, is one. And um, so, well, actually, that would have all of the indexes of all of the vowels. And the first of them, R0 is always whatever was last executed. Uh, the first of them is that one. There's no multiple vowels in there. Um, so anyway, um, this I'll be able to go and reconstruct. So. That gives me where I cut the word. I cut it into two pieces on that. And uh, then I reverse them. And uh, then that again is, then I, then I, I ravel them is the word used. And so I go and string them back out. And then, whoops. I add the a y on the end. Um, and actually, I first went and, and put everything together in just one long uh, line. Uh, but I found definitely going and splitting out this finding of the first vowel is, is worth it. So uh, P1 is this table. This is um, the locations of all the of, of the first vowels in all of this. And actually, this is the honest uh, uh, word, which sort of surprised me at first. But um, so pig, pig L uh, goes and, and essentially uh, one of the things, because everything is is um, is uh, reference counted, uh, going and saving this this saves uh, um, the the value and takes care of the reference counting. Because first, I want to find out where all the first vowels are, and then I, I take that that original the, the the input. And I've actually gone to using uh, just. Um, the dollar symbol for swap. That's swap, zero cut, reverse. Okay, so anyway, that's uh, the whole definition of, of um, pig L, and I'll check it on omelet, omelet A. Um, and, um, oh, this was finding out uh, where the first vowel in, in all the, the this list of words, one. 
but in any case, then here's all of the here's all of the translations, and to put it in a nice table. Actually, let me go and show my other window again. And I'll put it in a table. Whoa. Oh. Did I screw up T1? Oh, I, I think I know um, here. Yeah, there you are. And uh, so I didn't I didn't go into any complications, but I, I think that that sort of shows the vocabulary. An awful lot of vocabulary of, of, of cozy is, is about splitting and 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 one of the things is because of, this can apply in, in complex computations too. Um, but uh, I, I definitely spend an awful lot of time just dealing with um, with um, words text, even HTML, you know, you can see the same words that apply to parsing HTML and so forth. So, thank you, Bob, and thank you, Brad, for a wonderful presentation. Uh, anybody get a word in edgewise before I move it along to Bill Ragsdale's talk? Going once, going twice, thank you. All right, I, I really appreciate uh, you guys. Uh, I really appreciate your contribution. Uh, Bill, you're on. John is up after, on with the show. All right, do we have the screen up? Not yet. Okay. Has Brad uh, given you permission? Yeah, I should. Yeah, but, uh, about now. Awesome.